Hey guys, Nick Basco here, and today I'm going to be talking with Jordan Young. He's going to be participating in the PFL 2021 season. I'm going to talk to him about his training, about the upcoming season, the time off, and more. So if you guys like this video, like these interviews, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Getting close to the fight. How you feeling? How's training going? Training's going really well. You know, we just had a little switch up last week of opponents, but uh, it's all part of the game, you know. We're just going to keep doing what we do, and that's um, staying in shape, keeping the weight sharp, and uh, keeping the mind focused. You're still with the same gym that you've been with? Yeah, American Top Team. To the end of my career, you know, shout out Dan Lambert and uh, all the amazing coaches at American Top Team, the number one gym in the world by far. Yeah. You guys have been pretty much open for a while now down there. I mean, I'm in New York, so things are still a little, a little iffy. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the state of Florida is pretty crazy. You know, you can go into the strip club right now if you wanted to. <laughs> it's, it's open. But uh, American Top Team, we've stayed um, just for the fighters. You know, we had a, a, an amazing, huge program for, um, for civilians to do striking and grappling and uh, fitness, anything martial arts related. But we shut that down for now, and uh, the gym is just focused for professional MMA fighters right now. Yeah. And what do you think about this quarantine that they have you guys doing? 17 days. It's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. You know, some people are, are uh, taking it, like, and they have a negative output on it. And, like, you know, it's like this. Um, if you make it your friend, the trip, that is, the, the quarantine, then it'll work with you. You know what I mean? It's just business. You have to go in there, focus those last two weeks. Um, we shouldn't see any missed weight. You know what I mean? We shouldn't see guys show up uh, that are that are aren't focused. Or you know what I mean? Like everybody should be in great shape and, and focus. On top of and nobody's been paid because of COVID in a long time. You have to be there for two weeks, and, and there's nothing to do but <laughs> focus on the fight, right? So, yeah, I think uh, I'm not looking at it in any type of negative way. I'm looking forward to it. Um, is your like coaches and your people that are going to be in your corner going up for the whole 17 days or that they can come later on? So that's the beautiful thing about coming from an amazing gym like American Top Team. There's so many fighters and so many coaches. I have, uh, I believe, three train partners on this card and uh, they're all bringing, you know, their own train partners, their own coaches. And uh, a lot of that is ATT affiliated. So for example, like Gleason Tobias on the card, he's going to bring two coaches that I work with an American top team who I wasn't going to bring to the fight. Um, one of my coaches is coming 72 hours out before. So I'll replace that coaching that I'll need during that week with another ATT coach who's already uh, on location. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's good. Are you changing any of your preparation up like now to kind of incorporate the fact that you're going to be in quarantine for so long? Um, yeah, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going hard this week. Uh, we fly out next week and the first two days you're forced to quarantine. So I'm looking at it as, uh, <clears throat> why not use those two quarantine days as active recovery and rest days, go ahead and push hard through this week. And, uh, I don't really envision taking any days off this week. Yeah. I mean, you lost pretty much all 2020. Did, how did you like keep your motivation up? Like through the long layoff? I was winning all 2020. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> no, I, I get what you're saying. I, I definitely lost MMA time in 2020. Um, I used the time to focus on rehab. I had an injury in my last fight in November of 2019. So I used all 2020 to recover. I stayed fresh mentally. I stayed focused. Um, you know, I would be in the gym for uh, spurts of time where I was going really hard. And then there'd be other spurts of time where I was just drilling and uh, popping through to learn and, and taking it at a slower pace. Overall, I stayed in shape. I stayed dedicated to my craft. And, um, you know, just like everybody else, I felt some financial woes. So I had to uh, become resourceful, if you will, and uh, figure that out. But I did a good job and I uh, maintained my lifestyle. And I didn't lose anything during that time period. I kept, you know, everything that I own, I maintained. And, um, you know, I'm excited for it to be 2021. Now it's time to go add more to, to what I already have uh, obtained through my MMA career. What do you think fighting with no crowd is going to be like? Did any of your like training partners or teammates like warn you like what the difference is when you get in there with it's so quiet? No, you know, I haven't even really thought of that too much. It crossed my mind and, you know, I just simply thought that it'd be more like a gym atmosphere, you know what I mean? Like instead of having your your coaches and your training partners 
uh, around you, though, people who you're comfortable with, it's, it's people in suits and, uh, you know, cameras and stuff like that. Um, I'm still expecting there to be, you know, 30 to 50 people in the room, I'm, I'm estimating. And uh, none of those people really give uh, an explicit it about me or, you know what I mean? So it's not as comfortable as like my training partners and coaches, but um, I'll be able to hear my training partners and coaches. And that's a beautiful thing. It's got to be a benefit for her. Um, what's like mindset for this season, like going into the first fight and then continuing on? So I was going to uh, use my superior footwork and um, <clears throat> boxing IQ to get past uh, Shamilio Rama. He pulled out of the fight. Now Vinny Magdalish is in. Vinny obviously is a specialist. We all know what Vinny brings. I'm going to snipe Vinny. Um, snipers don't miss. I'm going to uh, spot him with my left hand, and I'm going to snipe him with my right. Once I get Vinny out of the way, he's one of the toughest matchups in the tournament. Um, he was added as a late addition, so guys weren't even thinking about Vinny. And he's the only guy in the tournament. Mm, shoe Face is also a jiu-jitsu specialist, but Shoe Face will box with you. You know what I mean? It's a teammate of mine. He's going to be a tough fight. He's going to get past Tom Lawler. And he's going to be a tough fight for anybody in the division as well. But uh, I think Vinny brings a different problem to, to the, the sport of MMA. You know, he's he's not he's a sloppy striker. He's not that good at anything except jiu-jitsu. And, uh, you know, that's his world, and he's going to look to go there. So I'm going to uh, stick to my game plan and get past Vinny. And then my mindset for the rest of the tournament is one fight at a time. But Vinny was in the finals. Um He's already made it to the final, so just getting past him, I'm sure, will uh, will be a good feeling and give me a good piece of uh, mental information to build upon as I progress the tournament myself. Do you think that the PFL like point system like fits your style? Yeah, you know, I have what uh, eight or nine first round finishes. I think it's like that. Um, I have a lot of finishes though, either way, and uh, I finished nine out of eleven fights, so I think it definitely um, it definitely works out for me. There's less fighters in the division as well, so I'm not sure um, how the points are exactly going to play out. I feel like just winning my fights gets me into the tournament at this point, but I haven't done any uh, additional research into that. But, you know, I'm focused on winning fights. Of course, you want to get the points, but I don't foresee myself sticking my neck out there and taking a 50-50 chance or anything like that to get the points, you know what I mean? When you first signed with PFL, what were some of the reasons that you chose this organization Besides the million dollars, I'm just assuming that was part of it. <laughs> uh, so, um, we did good business. We sat down. Uh, I told them frustrations I had in my current situations, uh, aspirations I have for my future. And I let them know uh, what, what I was looking to do in the mm -hmm. next couple of years of my career. And uh, they let me know what they were looking to do. And it, it just lined up well. And when it came to numbers, the numbers were there. And um, they showed an appreciation for me. And uh, the contract showed that. So it was just good business all around. Nice. Um, talking to a couple of PFL guys this week, and I was going to ask you all the same question. Like, what are you bringing into quarantine, like, to do during the time? Are you bringing, like, video games? Do you have, like, movies that you plan on watching? Like, what are you going to do to pass the time? Uh, if we're talking about entertainment-wise, of course, I have um, – I'm bringing my Xbox. You know, I play a lot of Call of Duty. I'm a gamer. Um, <clears throat> I like Mortal Kombat. And then speaking of Mortal Kombat, the Mortal Kombat movie is coming out the first week that we're there in quarantine. Um, you know, I watched Snowfall. Uh, I watch that weekly on TV. It's a really good show. And uh, there's three episodes left of the season. One episode comes on tonight and then next Wednesday and then the Wednesday before the fight. So I'm just going to go ahead and ignore it tonight and next week. And then the night before the fight, I have three hours worth of snowfall to watch. So I'm just using small things like this to look forward to and uh, and keep me preoccupied while I'm in quarantine. I'm also um, I'm ahead of the game. I have some tricks up my sleeve, uh, you know. We have to rely on the hotel to provide us with food. Um, I've I've went ahead and uh, took some matters into my own hands, and I'm going to have a nice little uh, setup for myself as far as food goes. And uh, you know, I don't envision changing too much from. I'm, I don't have to cut too much weight anyways, but I don't envision changing too much from my diet right here in South Florida at my house to what I'm going to be in in quarantine. Like I told you when we spoke on quarantine earlier, quarantine is what you make it. If you look at it as your enemy and as something that's going to hinder you, then that's what it's going to be. I have took the necessary steps to uh, just like chess. I'm two, three moves ahead. And um, when we get into that quarantine, I'm going to have everything set up for myself to make it home sweet home. Nice. Sounds good. Um, well, safe travels up there and uh, good luck in the fight. Yeah, most definitely. If you talk to Benny M, tell him I'm going to snipe him. Yeah.
I won't be talking to him. But. I just want to talk to the winner's circle. I understand that. Say, uh, <laughs> it's nice talking to you. I just want to give a quick shout out uh, to the best gym in the world, uh, American Top Team. I want to thank Dan Lambert for everything that uh, he's done for me and uh, all my coaches and training partners, my sponsors, um, my management, Janice Sports. I want to thank the PFL. I'm looking forward to flying in next week and uh, meeting the staff and um, the people behind the business. And, uh, you know, let's get the show on the road. You know, check me out on Instagram at JAY185. Um, I'll be detailing my uh, quarantine and, you know, my journey through this tournament in 2021. Awesome. Sounds good. Most definitely. Thank you, Nicole. I'll be talking to you soon. Yeah, yeah definitely. Thank you. Bye. Bye.